All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here we are in beautiful Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and I'm gonna do a quick walk around. Well, it's gonna be kind of a long walk around and uh, explanation description of my Chevy, 1957 Chevy 3100 uh, uh, short bed. So the uh, truck was originally uh, purchased by the Sonoma Valley School District down in California. Um, it has had two owners since then, um, making me the fourth owner. It had gone undergone a restoration sometime probably in the mid 80s. Um, and it was a nice looking truck when I got it, but it had a lot of uh, underlying issues, rust and whatnot that I, I knew it had. But um, so the first thing I did, uh, we did a full frame off restoration on this truck, um, cut out any and every little bit of rust and welded in good sheet metal the right way, butt welded, hammer and dolly work. So you, you've got all new cab corners, new hinge pockets, new fender thirds, a uh, whole new floor inside of the truck, um, sections of the firewall, just, you know, it, it, the rust wasn't terrible, it was just typical for one of these trucks. Um, and it's all gone now. And after that, uh, we took an epoxy primered every single part of the truck. Um, it was painted, uh, disassembled, so we could coat all sides of all of the parts um, correctly so you've got an epoxy primer everywhere and then we have our paint which is a single stage PPG tartan turquoise is the blue and uh, Bombay ivory is the white um, like I said the whole entire truck was painted disassembled so we got paint everywhere and the frame subsequently was uh, stripped to bare metal. The frame was in really good shape. No real issues with the frame. Um, we did a bunch of suspension work to the truck. So at the time I went through and, uh, you know, it's got tons of reinforcing, sub, you know, new subframes and boxing and all that done. And I'll touch on the suspension here in a minute. Um, and then the frame also got, uh, and all the suspension components were coated epoxy primered and then coated with a satin black urethane automotive paint. Um, and then, so moving on, oh yeah, got a bunch of new chrome on it, grills, bumpers. Um, I did the light surrounds in the Bombay Ivory also. Uh, those are modern h4 beams um, the emblems are the original emblems and let's see let's move on we'll go ahead and bear with me here for a sec okay moving on into the engine bay uh what we have here is a chevy ls3 Mated to a TR 6060R manual transmission. Um, the engine is out of a uh, 2012 Chevy Camaro. I think it had 30,000 miles on it when it was pulled, so we've got about 33,000 on the mile, on the uh, engine now. Went ahead and put in a new GM um, clutch, pressure plate. Uh, while we were in there, it, the original was in great shape, but you know, while we were there, might as well. I've put uh, cast iron hooker manifolds on the truck. I uh, wanted to go with cast iron rather than a header for reliability's sake. Um, this way you can use the stock metal GM uh, exhaust gaskets and not have to worry about retorquing headers and all that good stuff from there we're a two and a quarter mandrel bent um, 
exhaust, sectioned exhaust all the way back. We've got a crossover in a stainless magna flow muffler under the truck. And then we've got both pipes exiting the side of the truck here, right in front of the rear wheel, passenger side. Um, running the LS engine is a GM Performance ECU uh, and wiring harness. So this is just awesome. It's, it's factory Chevrolet stuff, but they got rid of all of the components that aren't necessary when doing an engine swap. Um, so you just have the, it doesn't have the post cat O2 sensors or it's not looking for an EVAP system, none of that. So you've got all your, your factory Chevrolet uh, sensors and sending units and, and GM engineering behind the ECU and uh, it's just you know reliability. We got to keep the drive-by-wire throttle body, drive-by-wire throttle pedal. Um, it's just, the, I wanted to keep this truck as reliable, as common sense, and as possible while providing just, you know, enormous performance. You've got your engine harness um, fuse box here, and you have a malfunction in the light indicator light here. You also have a malfunction indicator light in the cab, and you also have your OBD2 uh, port, reading port, also in the cab mounted to the firewall. Um, back behind the TR6060R transmission, we have a four inch driveline specialties aluminum drive shaft. And that's a, a company out of South Carolina specifically makes these drive shafts for these to mate to a TR6060R transmission. Um, probably get a better look at it from the other side actually, but there it is. And that goes back to a eight, Ford 8.8 inch rear end that has uh, Ford Performance Racing carbon fiber LSD unit in it. Um, awesome setup. It it's, doesn't bark at you when you go around tight corners. Um, it's a nice smooth LSD that just it lays two strips of rubber when you want it to. Um, and moving on, let's see, let's go to the brakes. Uh, we, I've gone ahead and moved the uh, brake booster and master cylinder up here to the firewall. Uh, originally they were down on the frame. It's just easier to service, easier to see what's going on. It has the correct proportioning valve for the four wheel disc brakes the truck now has. Um, it's, it's an awesome setup. The brakes work great. Pedal travels minimal, feels excellent, plenty firm, you know, stops great. Truck stops wonderfully with the four-wheel discs. Um, let's see, let me look at my list here. What else do we have? The fuel system is a uh, Mustang type 16-gallon um, tank, brand new, with a Walbro 255 LPH uh, in-tank pump and it's running, uh, I believe, 3 8 diameter. I'd have to check, but I think 3 8 diameter Russell fuel lines, all uh, 6AN fittings. Um, it's running through a uh, Chevrolet Corvette uh, LS style regulator filter um, that, that returns and keeps the pressure and just more, you know, off the shelf GM stuff, which is great. Um, and did the brake suspension. So what we've done is I put a uh, Heights independent tubular A arm independent front suspension on it. It's um, an awesome setup. You know, it's a it's a Mustang too tight front suspension, but it's specifically built for this chassis. Uh, the geometry is excellent, uh, spring rates are great, ride height's excellent, um, and you know, so you've got a modern rack and pinion, two and a half turns, lock to lock, and uh, power steering um, running off of the, the factory GM pump, so another off-the-shelf component and if it ever gives you trouble. Um, 
down to a uh, rack and pinion, like I said, and then we put Bilsteins on the front, and and it's got a, I think a one inch or an inch and a quarter front sway bar, which helps stiffen it up and keep it flat in the corners. And then out back, we I put in a no limit uh, engineering four link, which is really back. Far. We have a no limit engineering uh, four link, which is, in my opinion, bar none the, the best four link system for these trucks. See, they've got nice long parallel arms, um, great pan hard bar, and also ride tech dampening adjustable height adjustable coilovers and those ride techs they're made by fox so and fox makes good stuff um just awesome the this truck handles amazing it's predictable it's it, it's comfortable it's stiff but not overly stiff it doesn't crash over bumps it's you know it's stiff but compliant and i mean you know it, it handles really predictably it's a, a dream to drive and you know handles itself at speed corners pretty well i mean i just you know you, i'd never imagine a 57 chevy truck would uh feel like this when you drive it it's just a pleasure to drive puts a giant smile on my face every time i get behind the wheel um you know everything's new the brake lines are all new fuel lines i mean just it, you know it, it, it's a new truck literally when it comes to the components um out back to the bed we have a uh, reclaimed vg fur bed there's a there's a shop out in seattle that uh, reclaims old beams out of uh warehouses that are getting demolished out in downtown seattle so you know they're coming out of a you know 1900s late 1800s um buildings out there and they take the vg fur which i love doug fur and they mill it and that's what i like to use for my bed um all stainless hardware of course strips you can see there's your fuel filler right there in the back um i use a um, you can see how, how tight those growth rings are on that fur. That's really cool. I use a, a daily Seafin teak oil to finish my wood beds. Um, I really like that product. I, I built drift boats, wooden drift boats, and that's what I used to finish the inside of them. And I mean, I fish, you know, winters through Washington winters. Just, it's a great product. It's easy to reapply. It's a soft coating. so. You know, you don't have to worry about it peeling or cracking or any of the stuff that a hard finish does. Um, every piece of body hardware on the truck is all stainless steel. Uh, everything, that, everything that, you know, the fenders are attached with stainless. Uh, the grills are attached with stainless. The bumpers, any non-structural hardware is stainless steel. Structural stuff, I always went ahead and did, uh, you know, a hardened or a grade eight or above. So, you know, your structure, but but just any of the body, the fender mounts and bed mounts and all the pieces you can't even see, they're all stainless. So, um, chain, you know, the bed chains are stainless. Uh, yeah, you've got the the blue light or the blue dot tail lights. Um, which are awesome and of course stainless. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is there outside. Yeah, aluminum radiator with an electric fan that is triggered from the ECU, so it turns on when when the engine tells it to turn on. Um, and then we also have an auxiliary fan out here that turns on when your air conditioner turns on so that's mounted as a pusher on to the uh onto the ac condenser and this thing does not bat an eye when it comes to cooling it just does awesome i mean i've been over multiple eight nine ten thousand foot passes you know 
went through a parade with my uh, daughter, you know, for an hour and a half at three miles an hour, just tinkering along and it totally just uh, stays cool and it doesn't even bat an eye when it comes to it. So let's see, all right, moving on to the glass. Um, we have all new glass, all new weather stripping, um, all steel components is the name of the company that does the, uh, the glass and weather stripping, or the, the weather stri the glass weather stripping, sorry. The windshield's this awesome windshield I found. It's a reproduction uh, eyesight glass, which is Chevrolet introduced it in the mid to late 50s on their high-end vehicles. Is it? It's the first um, uh, from GM. It's their first tinted glass uh, with the you know the sun tint on the top portion of the glass. So I lucked out and was able to find one of those out there. So that's what's in. For that you got new wind windows new just all new class and all new weather shit all the way around um your wipers are now electric instead of the vacuum operated uh three speed switch inside um let's see let me look at my list here all right so we will go to the interior now and here is the inside of the truck, and what we've done here is the same as I did on the outside, which is try and keep it as refined and true to the era as I possibly could, but have it have modern uh, creature comforts and it just makes sense to be in a truck that you want to drive all the time. So. You know, you've got your air conditioning, um, your air conditioner is down there. It's like a vintage air unit, but it's not actually a vintage air unit. And then, so you've got your heater controls. That's fine, this is not wanting to focus. You know, your heater control uh, with the AC switch on it. Um, I do not like the, all right, back to the AC. I do not like the look of the aftermarket um, AC vents that you'll see on older vehicles, I just, I, I can't handle it. It, I, it drives me nuts. So your AC vent for the passenger is here. Of course, you have your defroster option and it works to get your AC out of there. Um, and then what I've done is, is hidden away aimable vents best I could for the driver. They're here and here. Um, and you, you know, you take a step back and they just disappear but the AC cranks, it works great. It keeps the cab plenty cool. Heater obviously works. Um, you got heated seats. I uh, went ahead and did heated seats. Um, the switches for those I have stashed right here. So you can kind of see, reach your arm back and you got high, low switch on your heated seats. Um, your radio is an AM FM Bluetooth uh, radio. Um, looks exactly like the stock radio, but it's got Bluetooth capabilities and it's got an auxiliary input. Your speakers are behind the seats. You've got two eight inch and the speaker boxes also house a couple of tweeters. Uh, sounds super good. Um, you know, they're behind the seats because I wasn't going to put speakers anywhere you could see them, but they get plenty loud and the sound quality is pretty decent. Uh, you can see I went ahead and did three point belts for the driver and passenger. And then you also have uh, a lap belt for the middle passenger. So your seat heater wires, um, both the top cushion and the bottom cushion are heated. Uh, this fabric is a turquoise uh houndstooth uh, that also covers the headliner and I, and the bottom line is i was gonna put a houndstooth in this truck and i wanted a houndstooth that matched uh the exterior of the truck you can see there's a little dirt spot right there sorry about that the interior is a little grungy just because i don't have a vacuum but it's 
is actually just a beautiful interior. It's got an ivory seat. You've got your tartan turquoise door card and Bombay ivory with a satin black dash and a satin black top half of the of the cab inside. Um, you've got your electric wipers here. Electric wipers here. This truck has a hydraulic uh, parking brake that is this button right here. You press your foot on the brake, pull the button out. There are parking brakes out, we're rolling. Put your foot on the brake, push the button in. You got your parking brake. It's a line lock to the front end, so if you want to do huge smoky burnouts, it's easy enough. And you can just undo it, yeah. So the dash is a classic in instruments, um, factory reproduction style with a tachometer, uh, electric speed sensor. It's sending out of the stock speed sender from the TR6060R. Um, all of your, every one of these inputs is uh, electronic input through from the LS, everything works, works great, works like it should. Your headlight switch obviously is over here. Uh, like I said, it's got the H4 beams in it now. I went with the stock um, 1957 Chevrolet uh, steering wheel um, and it's on a tilt, I did it tilt column that, and that kind of doesn't really, you'll see it go, that was specifically built for this chassis truck right here. You got integrated self-canceling turn signals and you've got a, uh, a hazard button over here and the horn obviously works. Um, down to your pedals, you've got Willwood, a uh, hydraulic clutch pedal in here. Um, and then you've got your brake pedal, hydraulic with a, uh, sorry, you can see the floor mats grabby there, but um, Willwood pads, you've got your drive-by wire throttle pedal here. I spent so much time uh, looking at pedal placements of supercars. Not that this truck's a super, you know, I just wanted the pedals in the right place. And this thing, you can heel toe it if you want to. I mean, not that you really are going to, I mean, I'm not, I have no, you know, I'm not kidding myself that it is a truck, but the pedals are in the right spot. You can heel toe it. It's, it's super fun. You've got your six speed manual shifter here with a hearse lever. Um, it, it shifter is, it turns the, it's a, the shift lever is mated to the top of the TR6060 transmission. It's this conversion that this guy does that it's just awesome, awesome kit. It turns the TR6060R into a top loader and your shift, like that's between first to second. You know, you look out, it's just a nice, short, super tight throw. Just the shifter feels amazing on this thing. It's so fun to shift. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, the heated seats, the houndstooth, the, you know, you got full carpet kit. Um, I put these mats in it just because they were Berber mats. And if the gray was an ivory, these would be like the perfect mats for it. But they, I like them, they're nice mats. And, there's your carpet underneath. You can see it's a, it's a little dingy. Well, not dingy, it's just a little grubby. I just haven't vacuumed it in a couple days. Um, leather shift boot. You know, you got your sound pads. I've got, you've got your jute sound deadening underneath the carpet. Then you also have your membrane. I put a sound deadening uh, heat reflective membrane throughout the whole entire cab. Um, if you come down, you have, well, obviously all new wiring with a modern mini blade type uh, fuse box and I've loomed everything up super tidy. Um, the wiring's just, I went straight common sense as I could with the wiring. I wanted it neat, I wanted it clean, and I wanted it all in looms and it just makes sense where everything goes. Um, spent tons of time just making sure the wiring was tidy. You can see the AC vents kind of take up some space, but you know, there's your OBD2 uh, plug, and and there's a bunch of pictures that I put in underneath the dash in the ad. You've got your two uh, vent control knobs for your old school air vents, which are awesome. Brand new gaskets, all rebuilt. Everything works great. Um, here you've got 
kind of stashed under the dash a little bit. You've got your starter button here because it's the original ignition and this thing had a floor starter to begin with. So kept the original ignition, there's your starter button. And then here is your check engine uh, light, your, your malfunction indicator light that's tied into the ECU. So you've got a, a light in here. And um, let's see what else I've got. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say. So I think that pretty much covers the interior of the truck. Um, yeah, oh, I don't think I talked about the wheels and tires. So real quick, jump back to the wheels and tires. These are uh, custom built by the wheelsmith down in Corona, California. They're a Chevy Rally type wheel with a custom wide 10 inch rim in the back, 10 inch by 15s in the back, 10 by eight in the front. Um, this is a one year only Chevrolet truck hubcap. It's got the Bombay Ivory Center. Um, pretty cool I like the cap you know and then you've got your your chrome smooth beauty rings um, your tires are coker BFG radial TA uh, white walls um, yeah, 255 in the back which is the absolute biggest I was gonna be able to fit without tubbing the truck and there's no way I was gonna tub this thing in the front you've got your 8 inch um, with a 235 so you know, you, there's there's some rubber underneath it, um, and the like I said, I mean the truck drives just wonderfully. Um, yeah, I tried to keep everything as clean and tidy, and just tried to cover the details with this truck. I mean, I tried to leave every little detail. Uh, you know, I tried to get it all. You've got your original emblems on the. Uh, side and on, on the, the front here um yeah shoot guys i'm sure i'm forgetting stuff uh my apologies this is like my fourth time trying to do a video for this thing i keep hitting buttons and or, yeah having to start over and stuff but uh yeah hope you enjoyed it and any questions please ask thank you